Whatever your views of the politics of 2016, it was a really dramatic year in terms of political communication. Because for the years running up to 2016, it had become increasingly obvious that politicians had lost the touch of engaging with the people they were trying to appeal to. The messaging had become far, far too sophisticated. Uh, I, I, I can think of examples of the use, for example, of the phrase cost of living crisis by the Labour Party or global race by the Conservatives or long-term economic plan by the Conservatives, which were phrases they thought were integral to the message they wanted to get across, which they shoehorned into every sentence in order to make sure that everybody heard the phrase. They had at the back of their head this notion that you have to repeat it 15 times before anybody actually notices you're saying it. And they thought this was the way to kind of engage and connect and talk to ordinary people. And it was failing. Uh, it, it didn't work and people had grown very weary of political discourse. It was one of those cases where the, the industry had become too sophisticated for its own good. This happens from time to time. I liken it to uh, school dinners. We became so good at producing school dinners, at squeezing the price down, uh, making an industrial process out of it, getting rid of kitchens in schools and making it all in factories, making it appealing to the kids by making turkey twizzlers, for example, costing 36p. We'd become so good at it, it took Jamie Oliver to come along and say, guys, have you seen what we're actually feeding our kids these days uh, in a television series? And in a very funny way, uh, it wasn't Jamie Oliver, it was Donald Trump who came along in 2016 and said, guys, do you realise how badly bad you all are at communicating with the voters? You don't sound like you believe anything you say. You speak in funny ways that no one understands. And whatever you think of Donald Trump, he was a shock to the communication system. Uh, because what Donald Trump did was, was to speak directly what he said. Often it didn't relate necessarily to the facts, but that didn't seem to matter to a lot of voters because he seemed to speak what he thought uh, and never seemed to shy away from his own thoughts. It's very interesting that by the time of the American election, Donald Trump's honesty ratings were really not materially different to those of Hillary Clinton because voters felt maybe he had fast and loose with the facts, but he had a different kind of honesty with the voters in terms of being more uh, authentic. Now, I think that leaves a really interesting challenge for everybody who doesn't want to be Donald Trump, <laughs> uh, particularly in politics and often in, in corporate life as well, which is how or what kind of language and what kind of communication you engage in that isn't Trump, and perhaps not as bombastic as that, which probably only Donald Trump can get away with, but which isn't going back to the same old stale uh, discourse that had become so prevalent uh, in the years before Donald Trump. And I think that, and that search, if you like, for a new kind of public discourse is one of the most interesting things and challenges uh, for the political and business class over the next few years.